Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. This is Jason Watt, and in this video, we're going to continue our series on needs analysis. We've already looked at needs analysis for life insurance and for critical illness insurance. So now we're going to look at the needs analysis for disability insurance. This is actually a fairly straightforward needs analysis and this is one that I would suggest is generally done properly when it's done if you actually do a needs analysis when selling disability insurance and the reason for that is because it's relatively straightforward basically we're going to take your after-tax income so whatever your after-tax income is and we look at that that's going to provide the basis for any disability insurance and insurers will use an income ratio guide or an issue and participation limit based on that after-tax income in most cases it can be a little bit complicated if it's going to be a taxable benefit but that's essentially what we look at so we look at that as your ability to acquire disability insurance and then what are your monthly expenses. Now for people who are spending more than they're making, which of course does happen, this gets a little bit wonky, but if you have somebody who's sort of in this range, your monthly expenses provide your need. And that's really relatively straightforward. So where does it get complicated? We do have a few sources of complexity here, thankfully not that many, and our sources of complexity here we would look at things like is there any group insurance in place? Do we have some government benefit programs that we have to take into account? And is there some existing disability insurance, some existing private coverage already in place? And these things can all make our needs analysis potentially a little bit more challenging, but they're all manageable. Essentially, group insurance, we have to make some assumptions here as to the likelihood of it actually providing the benefit that we'd like it to provide, and that's going to depend on factors like the likelihood of staying employed, uh, the degree to which we trust the any occupation definition of disability that kicks in usually after two years those kinds of things but the benefit is usually pretty straightforward here government benefits are going to be a little bit stickier uh, workers compensation tends to provide a fairly generous uh, disability benefit where it provides a benefit EI real short term and Canada pension plan very very difficult to qualify for any existing private coverage, this is usually going to be dealt with through issue and participation limits, although there are some exceptions to that. So if you have this insurance in place already, you're likely going to find that no matter what a needs analysis reveals, you're probably limited in how much more insurance you can get anyways. Some other factors that would be uh, potentially uh, adding some complexity here would be for high income earners. So typically once you get over about $150,000 of annual income, it gets a little bit difficult to put the right amount of disability insurance in place. It could be higher. You could interpret that maybe as being up to about $300,000 of annual income, but there is going to be a threshold for income at which you start to run into problems as far as giving a full income replacement or a proper income replacement. If you've got somebody with lots of passive income, whether that's business income or trust income or rental income, insurers don't like to deal uh, with people with tons of passive income because it creates problems in the sense of a motivation to get back to work after a disability. And people with unstable income as well, this can be very difficult then from the perspective of measuring the need and it can also be difficult to deal with from the perspective of actually putting the insurance in place. And related to that of course and lots of this today of course lots is written about 
the mobile workforce that we deal with in the early 21st century and this is around frequent job changes and this makes it difficult from uh, the perspective of a disability insurer to get the right insurance in place again that can also make it challenging to uh, figure out what the need is and sometimes you'll even find people who have frequent residency changes that is they switch countries of residence quite frequently and that can be that layer of complexity that makes it so hard to deal with disability insurance. Now when it comes time to actually put the insurance in place some things to think about here. So do we want to uh, fully insure which in fact is really tough to do with disability insurance. Disability insurance usually has a built-in gap, a motivation gap, where the insurer says we don't want 100% income replacement, we want something less than that in order that this person is motivated to come back to work. So we're generally going to have to have some sort of self-insurance in the form of an emergency fund, hopefully and that might include credit and so forth and we do have another video covering the emergency fund and it might cover other things here as well so you might look at dipping into retirement savings for example which is clearly not ideal but maybe necessary in some cases so we have to consider that probably some self-insurance is going to be necessary here whether it's covering off the first few weeks or first few months of a disability or whether it's insuring to let's say 80% of your expenses or let's say it's a contingency plan that says you know what if something goes wrong then we're going to reduce certain expenses and we're going to plan out what those will be in advance so there's lots of different options here and one thing to note here is around critical illness insurance which we talked about in the previous video in this series and we see that with critical illness insurance there's about a 15 percent overlap between uh, DI and CI claims that is people who have both policies generally about 15 percent of claims are able to actually be claimed on both policies but if you have critical illness insurance in place that might be something that helps to I don't really want to say self-insure but rather it's a form of insurance that's already in place which brings us maybe closer to being fully insured. So again, a relatively straightforward needs analysis for disability insurance, really not much to it. How much are your monthly expenses? And that's going to dictate the need. Everything else we add on to this just adds some complexity to it. Unfortunately, the reality of today's workforce is that these more complex factors are things that we do have to consider from time to time. So I hope that helps. I hope you've enjoyed the series on needs analysis. I hope you found it useful. I hope it gives you some things to take back to your business. Thank you very much and enjoy your continued studies.